All right, good morning um, <clears throat> or afternoon, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, this is unit three notes, forces of attraction and vapor pressure. Um, recall from last class, uh, the two activities slash demonstrations that we did right at the end of class. Um, you guys uh, experimented or viewed experiments of multiple substances that had a trait that we like to call volatility. Now volatility is not always equal amongst um, substances. And so you guys viewed water, which was a very non-volatile uh, liquid. And you also viewed um, acetone, which was a volatile liquid. And you can recall that the differences were that when you put a volatile liquid um, on a table, uh, one of our lab tables, um, it disappeared almost instantly evaporating up into the air. And we said that, that was because it had a high vapor pressure whereas water had a low vapor pressure. Now what we want to do next is try to make sense of this question here. Why do different liquids boil at different temperatures? Or why do liquids have different levels of volatility? And the answer here is going to be intermolecular forces. Now think about this from um, a word that we might already be familiar with, inter. If you think of international, you're flying between countries. And so intermolecular means between molecules. So this is forces of attraction between particles that hold them together. The strength of these forces uh, determines the boiling point of a liquid. So as we're learning, um, liquids can be divided into two categories. We can have volatile liquids, which have weak intermolecular forces. These forces uh, relative, are relatively easily or easy to overcome. And volatile liquids evaporate quickly And we saw this with the demonstration or the little activity that we did with acetone. Uh, remember the street name for acetone is just nail polish remover. Or I guess I should say that acetone is the main ingredient in nail polish remover. So in contrast to that, um, our non-volatile liquids have uh, strong intermolecular forces um, that hold molecules near each other. These forces are relatively hard to overcome. Non-volatile liquids do not evaporate quickly. And if you recall water, when you wiped the water onto the table, it sat there for a long time. And it sat there for so long that I even had to ask some of you guys to uh, wipe it up, um, clean it up before you left your lab station. Um, this water pretty much would have sat there for forever, okay? Um, well, forever is a strong word. Maybe um, a day before it evaporated. So um, if you recall the whoosh bottle um, demonstration, uh, we, used a volatile liquid to demonstrate something called vapor pressure. And so when liquid is in a closed container, some of the liquid, liquid will evaporate. And even though that whoosh bottle wasn't completely closed, it, the top of it was very narrow and when it was hard for uh, these molecules to get out of this bottle. Um, so they kind of all vaporized and stayed in there because this narrow opening here was kind of hard to escape. So um, when we put them in a closed container, some of the liquid will evaporate. And we help this by providing a large surface area by spinning the bottle around. And so now there is vapor or gas present, which exerts pressure within the container. 
Um, and a good example of this is gasoline in your car. Um, And gasoline can evaporate um, or vaporize and so that's why you might see signs when you're at the gas station like hey don't um, uh, make any sparks happen um, while you're pumping gas into your car because as you're pumping it in there, the fumes are coming out, and um, that's why gasoline has a, a typically very strong smell um, because those particles are going up in the air and you guys are picking them up with your nose. So um, that gasoline can vaporize and we don't want sparks around it. So notice up here, here's the vapor up above the liquid, and that's kind of what um, you would see if you were to look inside of your fuel tank. Um, so volatile versus non-volatile liquids. Um, here's some more information about these right over here. So moving on, um, a volatile substance will evaporate um, easily. Uh, leading to more vapor and therefore a higher vapor pressure. Non-volatile liquids do not evaporate as much and have a less vapor and therefore a lower vapor pressure. So recall the whoosh bottle one more time. Um, we put something called isopropyl alcohol alcohol into this bottle. Um, street name for isopropyl alcohol is just rubbing alcohol, but remember this is extremely strong concentrating, concentrated rubbing alcohol, and that means it was even more volatile than the stuff you buy at the store. Um, we spun this bottle around a little bit and now there were all these particles, pretty much all that liquid is vaporized and we know that because there was no more liquid left in that bottle. And then we added a little bit of a spark in through the top in the form of a match. And whoosh, all of that uh, isopropyl alcohol, which is flammable, uh, ignited, combusted, and we had a little bit of an afterburner effect come out the top, um, which is very exciting. And depending on which class you're in, scared me quite uh, significantly. Okay, so here's some practice. Why don't you guys go ahead and do the practice right now. Um, let's pause this video. And then uh, in about three minutes, we'll resume the video and we can get some answers to these questions. Okay, so use the image below to answer the following questions. Um, notice that we have two liquids here. Um, we have vapor liquid equilibria for pure benzene. This is meaning that the vapor up above and the liquid are in equilibrium, which means there's no um, change happening here. Uh, this would be a sealed container. Um, and this uh, substance is called benzene. And we also have vapor liquid equilibria, meaning equilibrium for something called pure toluene. And this, um, I'm sorry, toluene, this should be spelled like that, toluene. Um, so notice the difference in these two diagrams. Um, the vapor pressure equilibrium for toluene has many less um, particles in the air, which means it has less vapor than benzene. So think to yourself, which one of these has a lower vapor pressure? And that is the first question. What is it? Well, it's 
all you mean. Um, because it has less particles vaporized. Uh, which liquid is most volatile? Which one is it? Well, it's benzene. Recall the definition of volatility is more easily evaporates. And so here we see more of these particles up in um, the atmosphere above this liquid. And so benzene, because many more particles have evaporated. Um, lastly, which liquid, or second to last, which liquid has a stronger intermolecular force? Remember, intermolecular forces, forces between molecules, which one of these has a stronger force holding them together? Well, that would have to be toluene. And think of this as the molecules want to stay together in the liquid form. They want to stay together in the liquid form. So the last question is kind of an application question using the term boiling point. Um, which liquid would have a higher boiling point? Would this be toluene or benzene? Which one of these would take more energy to cause evaporation to happen? Um, which is what happens when we boil. Well, this one wants to do it more easily. So then over here, this one would have to require more energy for that to happen. This one would require less energy. So which one would have the higher boiling point? Remember, the longer you boil, the more energy you put in. So toluene would have to require more energy more energy needed to pull the particles apart. Okay, um, that's the end of our notes for page seven. Uh, forces of attraction and vapor pressure. Um, hopefully that was helpful. You've got the next page, uh, page eight, to complete um, as your homework assignment uh, for this evening. Thank you very much.